Multiple endocrine neoplasia is the topic for uh, this video in particular, multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2A. And uh, that's also known as Sippel syndrome. And the way I remember this is uh, Sippel is, uh, begins with S. And 2A um, is the second type of men. And that also begins with S. So that's how I remembered it. Before I get into everything, I want to show you a picture that sure, sort of uh, illustrates um, the, the three endocrine glands involved in men 2A. Those are illustrated right here. Uh, the first one is the parathyroid and there's an arrow pointing to the four small parathyroid glands and the good news is that the second organ which is the thyroid gland is in just pretty much the same uh, uh, location so you can kind of remember thyroid parathyroid those are the two up uh, up here in the neck area and then the final gland is right here the arrow pointing to it and that is the adrenal gland and the adrenal gland uh, the tumor uh, that um, is involved in men 2A is called a pheochromocytoma and we'll talk a little bit more about that a little later on. The three players, I'm going to make a little diagram here, or a chart rather. So you've got the thyroid, you have the parathyroid, and you have the adrenal. And in particular it's the adrenal medulla, the middle part of the uh, adrenal gland. And the um, thyroid produces um, a very uh, specific uh, uh, tumor, abbreviated MTC, and it stands for medullary thyroid carcinoma. So remember that. And the parathyroid, uh, really uh, the uh, tumors involved are adenomas and these uh, lead to uh, parathyroid hyperplasia. Uh, hyperplasia also uh, known as when the number of cells increase in number. And then finally the adrenal medulla produces a, a very specific type of tumor with an interesting name, pheochromocytoma. And I'll go into a little detail about each of these and so here we go. So the presentation of the the first one here will probably just be um, as the diagram you saw earlier a tumor or a nodule in the neck and then the presentation of these parathyroid um, adenomas involved um, what hormone is being generated by those glands and that is the parathyroid hormone PTH and parathyroid hormone increases calcium in the bloodstream and when you increase calcium in the bloodstream that can uh, obviously I mean the, the term is hypercalcemia but hypercalcemia can lead to kidney stones as the calcium goes and deposits itself in the kidney and that's also known as nephrolithiasis and then finally, uh, pheochromocytoma uh, produces uh, these catecholamines uh, known as epinephrine and norepinephrine. And these catecholamines uh, cause a strong sympathetic uh, nervous system responses. Uh, one of the most uh, uh, important ones is vasoconstriction and vasoconstriction, if you remember, causes uh, high blood pressure, severe high blood pressure. So I'm going to need a little bit more space. This leads to hypertension. But what's interesting about the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine from the adrenal gland is that it's episodic. It's kind of like, like that. So it's normal and then it's really high, normal really high. And that reflects in the blood pressure. And these episodic... Uh, bursts of uh, catecholamines that come from the adrenal medulla are described as, uh, are described as paroxysms so, and that's also reflected in the symptomatology you get paroxysms of high blood pressure and paroxysms of other symptoms related to pheochromocytoma which include anxiety headaches palpitations 
and also sweating. So as you can clearly tell from these um, symptoms, these are all strong sympathetic uh, nervous system responses. All right, now let's get into the diagnosis. Well, we got thyroid, we have parathyroid, and we have adrenal gland, adrenal medulla in particular. Well, uh, a big p component of the um, diagnostic workup of MEN2A is imaging because these are tumors that you will need to um, you know, localize and that's usually done with a CT or an MRI so that's a big part of it but in addition there's blood tests that you can do and urine tests so if you're trying to uh, do a diagnostic workup of a suspected parathyroid tumor you can measure parathyroid hormone as a simple blood test and you can also of course measure calcium um, adrenal medulla, if you remember, releases epinephrine and norepinephrine, and these can also be measured. Another thing you can measure, in addition to norepinephrine and epinephrine, is the breakdown product or metabolites of these two uh, catecholamines. And those metabolites are known as metanephrines, and these can be measured as uh, blood tests or even urine tests. So that's a uh, brief. Uh, uh, listing of the diagnostic uh, workup. Treatment and management, MEN2A, uh, really is surgical. That's the primary way you have to excise these tumors. And then also genetic testing is part of it because um, MEN2A is a hereditary. Multiple endocrine neoplasias are actually, they're all you know, hereditary and the genetic testing is very important in uh, identifying a child uh, with a, this uh, syndrome early on so that you can do the necessary treatments before it becomes um, uh, more severe or you know, advanced stage tumors. And then finally, there's one clinical vignette, just one, and here we go. A patient consults a physician because of a small nodule in his neck that on biopsy proves to be a parathyroid adenoma. The patient's mother had medullary carcinoma of the thyroid. In addition to medullary carcinoma of the thyroid, to which of the following conditions would this patient be particularly vulnerable? Okay. Well, what's happening in this question is this patient already has this and his mother had this. So this patient is most not guaranteed but most likely um, on route to developing MEN2A and if he does which other tumor or, or condition would he develop well basically what they're asking you is what's the final piece of the puzzle of MEN2A and that's this tumor which is a tumor of the adrenal gland in particular the adrenal medulla and that in this question is choice D